So in this case presentation, I was wondering what should I put for the cases, and I decided that we will take a look at these two cases. This is something that you're not going to find in the textbook. And I just want to highlight how important to uh, evaluate the screening views uh, to arrive to the correct diagnosis. I'm going to show you specifically the standard screening views, and we will read them together to see how we can make those um, diagnosis is that you're probably going to see once in a lifetime. So the first patient was referred to us the, the suspected fetal growth restriction in intracardiac echogenic uh, focus noted in the left ventricle. She was um, premigravida at 23 weeks gestation. So, and we performed the detailed fetal sonogram and fetal echocardiogram. We found that the fetus uh, indeed growth restricted based on our definition. So, the estimated fetal weight was 7th percentile in the abdominal circumference at the 6th. And then we saw the severe cardiomegaly. So, here I would like to introduce to you this four chamber view. And using the checklist that we just discussed, you know, uh, this morning, I want us to take a look at this axial plane of the chest. So what can we see here? We can see that the heart is enlarged for sure. I mean, there is no way that you can fit even two hearts of this size to this chest, correct? I hope that you agree, and this is complete rib on each side, so we're in a very nice axial plane. So, but the enlargement of the heart demonstrates the very symmetric enlargement of all chambers. This is what usually happens that we have the volume overload and so that there is definitely something you know happens to this heart but you know we need to know what it is so we're going to look further. So any other changes other than just a big heart? Anything else we can recognize here? Very good. Yes. So that there is a vessel on the right in the chest. This is a descending aorta, and this is a huge st structure, it seems pulsating, it seems that it's vascular. So this is a typical place that the, where the azygous vein will be found. And even though we don't know what specifically this vessel is, but um, this is a really big azygous vein if this is azygous vein. Right, so it's even bigger than the aorta. Remember, it needs to be three times smaller. This is huge, okay? So maybe this is the source of the volume overload for that four chamber view. So the next view that we want to take a look at, this is our next screening view. This is the three vessel in trachea view. What we can see here, you can see here. So the topic I'm coming is AV septal defects and I'm very grateful to um, the introduction by Julia. Um, before all the genetics, I don't need to recapitulate because it has been explained. And uh, she also, how the primum ASDs and the inlet VSDs show, uh, look like, you know already. So makes my talk much easier. Um, I would like to remind you that there are synonyms that will be used if we talk about AV septal defects. Some people talk about AV uh, canal defect or intercardial cushion defect. It's the same. Uh, it's a common abnormality um, uh, to have an AVSD is 5% of all structural heart diseases uh, are AVSDs in all variants. Um, it's also very important that uh, it is very often associated with genetic abnormalities, unlike the muscular VSDs that you just heard have almost no risk of a genetic abnormality and even the perimembranous, the risk is low unless uh, you have a overwriting aorta and the tetralogy. So let's first uh, look at the normal AV junction and then go into uh, the anatomical and diagnostic features of uh, AVSDs and the associated abnormalities. Um, as you have heard um, and seen before is that the atrioventricular um, uh, uh, septum should have only one communication, really, and that's the patent for Amin um, You have two separate inlets uh, to both ventricles. Um, the tricuspid valve is a bit more apical compared to the mitral valve. If you look on fast uh, in the surgical view, uh, the right AV valve 
has a septal leaflet, a uh, posterior inferior leaflet, and the anterior superior leaflet, while the um, uh, mitral valve has an anterior leaflet and the posterior uh, mu mural leaflet. Both valves are separated by, um, both valves are um, surrounded by uh, um, a fibre muscular ring and they are completely separated from each other. Um, finally, uh, the aorta itself is wedged in between um, the AV valves, so they are in continuity, the mitral valve is in continuity with the aortic valve. This is just the way the valve opens. Now, one thing uh, we always talk about uh, when we look at the four chamber views, the heart axis, the size of the heart, but we always never mention um, the relationship between atrial septal length. So we're going to be doing a hands-on presentation on the GE a new system, the Expert 22, on a model that's about 20 weeks. So I'm going to be scanning behind the curtain with the microphone on, and I will uh, kind of give you some tips about how do I do the, the ultrasound examination of the heart. So we have a 3D probe that is RM7C, which I really like uh, probe. So the first thing I do is, um, can you see the screen? Yeah? So I'm going to open the sector with first. First thing I do is I see the presentation of the fetus. So this is a cephalic presentation. The spine is on mom's uh, left side. So left side would be down. So the, the apex of the heart is on the left side and the stomach is on the left side. So we have normal, but then I also look at the descending aorta and the IVC in the abdomen to make sure that that is on the correct side. And I look at the portal sinus and I want the portal sinus to turn towards the right side as you see here. So I look at all these things as I'm looking at Cyrus. So next, I'm going to just go ahead. So the heart is in the right orientation. So I'm going to take advantage of this. I'm going to reduce the sector width. And if you look at the frame rate up here, you will see that the frame rate is 41 hertz now. I'm going to reduce some more. We're up to 60 hertz. And I'm going to I'm going to reduce the depth a little bit, and look, we're up to 125 hertz already, which is a great. Anything above 25 to 30 hertz is, gets you close to real time. I'm going to increase the 2D gain so you can project better on the screen. And then I'm going to add some magnification to this. And this is typically how I scan. Now that I'm here, I'm going to reduce the, the 2D a bit. So. So look at, we're up at 119 hertz. So what I'm gonna do first is, I'm looking at the ventricles, I'm looking at the morphology of the left ventricle, apex forming, I'm looking at the right ventricle, looking at the moderator band at this angle right here, and I'm looking at the valves, this is a good plane to look at the septum, I'm looking at distinct, two distinct AV, AV valves here, looking at the atria, make sure the atrias are normal. So, what is really critical is your ribs on either side should be your guide throughout the whole examination. So, so I'm gonna, every time, if I'm, if I'm in this orientation right here and I'm trying to get a four chamber view, if I look on the outside, I see that I have one full rib, which is T4, by the way.